This is rebuilding a vintage open steam launch part 27. Modifications in the workshop, followed by a little bit of varnishing. I've received a few messages from people asking about the camera setup in the workshop. Normally the camera is mounted on a Manfrotto fluid head, which in turn is mounted on a Manfrotto tripod. And I move this around the workshop to where I need it to be. I'm constantly fighting lack of light in the workshop, so I've put some new lights in. These are far better, and the working areas are all much brighter now. At the beginning of this video, I showed a camera mount that I made that was over the Boxford lathe, and this is a camera mount that I made which is over my old Smart and Brown 1024 lathe. So with this new setup, which was very easy to construct really, it just means there will be less setup time. I can just clip the camera into the holder on the lathe that I wish to video. This new system is far better, much more accurate. No more balancing the tripods on the lathe bed, which takes time. With these new camera mounts directly over the lathe, it will make things much simpler. And in the forthcoming video series, How to Build a Model Steam Engine, starting with number one, which will be a Stuart Models Victoria, there will be quite a lot of video footage of the machining operations. Time now for the rest of the video, which is about the model open steam launch. I've given the entire top surface of this boat a very, very light rub down with some Scotch Brite to key it for the next coat of varnish. I'm applying the varnish with a varnish brush that I use, which is a very good quality brush. More about that in a moment. I'm using an oil based polyurethane varnish, which is very tough and will protect the wood for many years to come. I'm also varnishing the fittings on the deck, and I wouldn't normally do this, but when I accidentally got some varnish on one of the fittings, it suddenly looked far better. So I decided to varnish the fittings as well. This is the brush that I use for varnishing. It's a very good brush. As far as paintbrushes go, it's really good. I just use this for varnish jobs, and it's excellent. It never sheds any bristles, and it applies the varnish very evenly and very smoothly. Never use the cheap paintbrushes that you find in DIY stores. They're okay for painting your house, but not too good for painting model boats, or in this case, varnishing. After applying an even coat of varnish to the deck parts, I then moved on to the superstructure. This is the stern superstructure, and I'm putting plenty of varnish on this grill in the bottom. With a model boat, it's essential to waterproof all the parts. This model boat is not fully waterproofed. The outer wooden bits have never been varnished, but they're going to be. I'm going to seal the entire unit. Without proper waterproofing, the combination of heat and oil and steam and water would damage the parts. Whenever I use this oil-based polyurethane varnish, I always have a companion pot of white spirit. And this allows me to fully control the viscosity of the varnish. This polyurethane varnish can be a little bit sticky, and if the brush starts dragging, then I just dip the tip of the brush into the white spirit, and then mix the white spirit with the varnish that's already on the wood. You have to be careful here, and you really do need to practice. So if you want to have a go at varnishing a model boat part using this technique, I would suggest that you don't start on the part that you've just made for the model boat, practice on a piece of scrap wood and see how it turns out. You'll soon get the feel of it, and when you get it right, you get a really good finish. Sometimes it can always look as good as a sprayed part. With the bow and stern superstructure parts varnished, it's time to varnish the seating. First of all, I stuck back the leg that's missing. And in fact, on the front part of the seating, there's a leg missing entirely. So we'll have to make one of those. I'll show that in a future episode. In exactly the same way as the deck and the superstructure parts, before varnishing, I gave them a light rub down with some Scotch Brite. I didn't want to use sandpaper because that may have made the parts look very patchy once I overcoated with the new varnish. When I varnish parts like this, I tend to varnish the underside first, followed by the top side, but then the varnish runs through from the top side to the underside, so I revisit the underside and remove the surplus varnish. And this way it doesn't look like the part's been painted with a tar brush. This can be quite a messy job and you do get some of the varnish on your fingers. But you can remove this with some white spirit quite easily. During the varnishing of these seating units, I noticed that there are some bits and pieces in between the lats on the seating. 
Some of these bits and pieces are firmly stuck to the wood between the seating lats from a previous varnishing. I often use an alternative method of applying varnish. This is an excerpt from my 3 DVD set all about how to build a model steamboat. In this clip I'm applying the first coat of varnish to the top decking. The main planking on the floor of the boat has had a couple of coats and you can clearly see my reflection in it. It's best to apply many smooth even coats. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.